Hi, I'm Eric Bibb. Wanted to talk a little bit about some information that we're covering in our uh, Cal. Hi, Murph. Great. Go lay down, puppy. In our uh, Cal Fit 400 class integrated sports performance training at the University of California in Pennsylvania. I'm going to do a short YouTube video here to discuss some of the content from our first module as well as highlight the importance of core stability as well as good technique and good form and appropriate exercise progression. When you're talking about sports performance training, weight loss, or just general health and fitness, exercise technique and correct form is, is critical to long-term success. It's just not about getting someone in shape for a month or improving someone's 40 time or helping them improve their bench press, but it's longevity in whatever it is that they do so they can incrementally achieve uh, goal after goal after goal. Some of the things that we had talked about we're progressing core exercises, starting out with a stabilization level exercise for the core with as little to no motion in the spine, then going to motion in the spine, and then power. Following the National Academy of Sports Medicine paradigm of stabilization, strength, and then power for training the core. And with the stabilization mechanism, maintaining stability of the spine, that intersegmental stabilization where vertebrae on top of vertebrae is held in place, where the pelvis along with the sacroiliac joint are held in line, and then the lumbar spine is integrated as a unit down into the rest of the lumbar pelvic hip complex is going to be a key to success for any health and fitness or athletic performance goal. I'm going to go over an example of an exercise here that is done often. It's done okay, but I think people are missing the boat on some of the benefits or abilities of it. The goal is to activate the, the deep intrinsic core stabilizers to maintain little to no motion in the spine while we're doing an upper extremity movement. So we're going to do some pressing or upper body movements. I'm not going to use any resistance. This works extremely well on a stability ball. You can do it on an autumn and a bench. I'm just going to happen to use a wheelie stool here too. The goal is to stay engaged in the abdominals, engaged in the glutes, and then not move while we're doing any movements to the upper extremity. That's the key. We also want to maintain a symmetrical alignment between the hips. I'll show you some common compensations that we see where people end up um, perhaps even doing themselves some harm with a fairly basic exercise. So I'm going to mimic doing a, a dumbbell stability ball chest press or any sort of chest press where we're holding a bridging position, staying still, moving through that neural continuum of progression through the upper body, holding a bridge alignment here, glutes are engaged, hips are even, ribs stay still, starting out with a two arm progression, then going to an alternating arm from the top, going from an alternating arm from the bottom, doing one arm, and then one arm you can't even do with rotation, more so with a stability ball. What we tend to see is people's, people tend to drop one hip, or their low back arches, they tend to lift way too high and extend their spine. Uh, you want to make sure that that's not happening, that we're engaging the abdominals, engaging the glutes, staying as level as possible throughout the exercise. So don't let that hip drop. A cue that you might give someone is to engage that right glute or give them a tactile cue and have them lift their hip up towards your hand. That might help. You might need to do some more extensibility work or flexibility work on that right hip flexor complex. You might need to practice some bridges to get some glute activation before the exercise or some isolated hip extension work, some more core stability work, whether it's a quadruped opposite arm and leg raise. Those are key movements. And if you have an exercise like a stability ball chest press and someone cannot stay neutral, then there's a very good chance that they're not going to be able to do many of the other exercises in the stabilization level, whether it's a standing two-arm cable chest press or a common exercise like the plank or the hover or the prone iso abs, which just different names for the same exercise. Prone iso abs is an exercise that is often done incorrectly with an arch in the low back, around the low back, around the thoracic spine, cervical spine out of alignment, arms crossed, it's rough. People don't do it like it's supposed to be done. They end up just holding it for long amounts of time and not really getting the benefit. The benefit of doing these stabilization style of exercises is to maintain ideal alignment of the spine. Not to build poor movement pattern on top of muscular imbalance. That's not going to do anyone any good. That's going to put more stress and strain on the synergist, more stress and strain on tendons, ligaments, discs over time it's going to perpetuate this pain spasm pain cycle we're going to lead to repetitive strain injuries at best and at worst a more significant injury over time and many of the clients and athletes that we see 
aren't going to be training with us for 15 or 20 years. They're going to take the habits and techniques that we teach them right out of the box and perpetuate many of these for year after year after year. So question is, if I let someone continue to lift their shoulder up while they do a chest press or arch their low back or let their right hip drop during a bridge exercise, what benefit am I really doing them long term and potentially what harm am I doing them long term because they're going to perpetuate that time and time again. So when we're talking about progressing exercises, maintain the alignment of the five kinetic chain checkpoints, feet, knees, hips, shoulders, head. Make sure that someone is excellent at maintaining neutral alignment of the lumbar pelvic hip complex long before we have them flexing and extending and rotating the spine. I mean, you never have to do a crunch on a stability ball with someone. It's not written anywhere that you must do a crunch with somebody. Spend more time preventing movement at the spine because people have trouble controlling themselves. They don't have very good kinesthesia or sense of their um, aware spatial awareness or where they are in space. So spend time working on neutral alignment investing heavily into their stabilization and develop of their stabilization mechanism, progress them appropriately throughout the levels of the OPT model. I've talked some about core training and some about resistance training here, but the overarching concept is alignment of the kinetic chain and quality execution. That's what's going to breed you long-term success for your own programming as well as with your clients. My name is Eric B. and if you'd like to learn more about the CalU program, I'll put a link down across the bottom of this. And depending on what time of year you're watching, the National Academy of Sports Medicine actually has Pursuit of Excellence scholarships that they're offering. And you can go there and explore and maybe you'll be selected to have a full scholarship through the California University of Pennsylvania. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Eric Beard. Have a great night.